Halo Infinite Sandbox were released in a rather good state. Probably the most balanced sandbox we've had at launch in a Halo game. Though there are some aspects of the sandbox that definitely need to be toned down or need some love. So in this video I'll give you the good, bad, and the ugly when it comes to Halo Infinite's sandbox. And what needs to be changed. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again giving another discussion video about Halo. Today we're talking about the sandbox and what needs to be buffed and what needs to be nerfed and what's actually in a pretty good state but also something that needs a little bit more time. As eventually we're going to get some patch updates when it comes to Halo Infinite's weapon sandbox. So I dug deep into the community, pulled out some information, pulled out some of my thoughts as well into this video to give a nice well-rounded concept of what needs to be nerfed, what needs to be buffed, what's in a good state, but also what needs a closer look. Leave a comment down below what your number one change would be for the Halo Infinite Sandbox. Mine would be the Ravager, but I'll get into that in this video. So if you guys like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that subscribe button. Keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. So let's get right into the content here. First, let's start with the weapons I think that are in a good state that really don't need to be changed moving forward. I say the BR, the Needler, Sidekick, Shock Rifle, Heat Wave, Cinder Shot, Sniper Rifle, Rockets, and Energy Sword for the weapons are all in a pretty good state. I don't feel like any of them are overpowered or underpowered. They fit the sandbox really well and I think they're just launched out of the box in a really good state. Some of the equipment that launched really well, I think it's the threat sensor, works out rather well. The repulsor, the active camo, I love the fact that you're off radar while moving with active camo, as well as the thruster. I think they're all in a good state right now. And really all of the grenades, I think, work in the sandbox very well on top of that. So we got like the spiker, dynamo, frag, and plasma. I think they're all fun. I love the dynamo grenades. They're a really fun addition to the sandbox. So now we got all the good stuff out of the way. Let's go into what needs to be nerfed. The stuff that I think is a little too strong for the sandbox of Halo Infinite. I've seen this throughout the community a lot about saying that to, they need to nerf the AR in some capacity, but they never really say exactly how. And I would agree that the assault rifle could use a little bit of a nerf. I mean like a slight nerf though. I like how effective it is, but I think it might be a little too effective over range. So I think the time to kill is actually right on point for the assault rifle, but I think it's a little too effective over range where oftentimes I'm able to just fully auto somebody, you know, at a pretty good distance. I feel like it's a little too far out for an assault rifle, which is more designed for close range engagements. So what I would like to see for the assault rifle is to shorten the time to max spread on your assault rifle. If you guys haven't taken time to look, this is a clip I recorded of showcasing the spread on the assault rifle. You can see how it takes some time to get to that full max spread. If maybe if you got to that max spread a little bit sooner, it would reduce the range effectiveness on that assault rifle. So it still kills and it fits the role properly. But I think hitting that max spread sooner would help kind of place it in its role a little bit better without really messing with the damage values. Now I know I might get a little hate for this one, but I would like to see the grapple shot get nerfed in some capacity, but not necessarily nerfed in how fast it can be used and how it's used. I think it's really fun. So I want to maintain that fun aspect of it. So there are some parts of it that I feel like can be, well, kind of exploitive. The exploitive part of the grapple shot is that you can like grapple through geometry, which is definitely not physically possible. You can do this throughout multiple maps of Halo Infinite, but I think this jump on recharge really showcases what I'm talking about, where you can basically go from one side of the map to the other in like a couple seconds because you can grapple through the bridge on recharge, which really shouldn't be possible. It is very fun, but again, it's like physically impossible, but you're still able to do it within the game. I like to see that kind of stuff get nerfed on the grapple shot. The next one I'm kind of maybe on, but I'm kind of leaning towards it. And that is having a two shot melee for the mangler. If you guys don't know, the mangler is a one shot, then a melee to get that kill, which I like that interesting aspect of it within the sandbox, but it might be a little too good. That one shot melee is such a fast combo if you line it up properly, that like you really don't have much time to counter that reaction or even have time to recognize that oh my god they're holding a mangler i gotta keep my distance it's been a lot of talk within the competitive community as well making it a two-shot melee i personally like having the one-shot melee but i could see how a two-shot melee might be more balanced i think three for three should definitely take a look at how people are using this weapon and and how if the weapon is performing as it should i would put in the closer look section but i'm kind of leaning towards that two-shot melee next let's talk about the buffs these are aspects of the sandbox that just need a little bit more love and care to make it a little more effective and comparable to some of the other weapons within the sandbox. But like I mentioned earlier in this video guys, my number one change would be making the Ravager a consistent three burst kill. If you guys don't know, right now you have to directly land three bursts 
in a row on one Spartan to get a kill. So oftentimes it's like a four, sometimes a five round burst to get a kill. I feel like that time to kill is way too low when it comes to compared to other weapons like the, within this close range engagements, most likely they'll be fighting against like assault rifles, maybe even battle rifles and things like that. You will pretty much get outclassed every time within a Ravager. So I would like to see a more consistent three burst kill. I think that three burst kill is a perfect time frame for it. I think it's just kind of unlikely to do it. Maybe increase like the area of effect damage, maybe slightly increase the individual shots where it still requires you three bursts to get the kill. There are multiple ways you can do it. I just want that three burst kill. Next on our list is our first bit of equipment. That is the drop ball. I like to see a nice little buff towards that one. We did get a buff from the deployment time, which I think is in a proper time. I mean, I still like it being more a forethought kind of a piece of equipment, not like the bubble shield where it was more reactive. I like the forethought that you needed for the drop ball so it doesn't really get affected to the gunplay too much. But I do feel like the panels are a little weak. Like oh, maybe like have like an extra burst of a bat rifle worth of damage to take out a shield. Cause right now, like I'm still feel like I'm able to like kill players through a drop wall. I feel like it just kind of takes a little extra time or something. With the drop wall, it's just a really fine balance you need to make between like having it be an effective bit of equipment, but it doesn't stop the flow of gameplay. Right now the drop wall barely stops the flow of gameplay. I like to see a little bit more of a intrusion to that. Next, we have the plasma pistol. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah, put in the discharging ability for vehicles like we had traditionally. I don't want that at all for the plasma pistol. I think it sits well within its sandbox because we have the shock ammo, right? We have the shock damage type, which like dynamo grenades instantly disable vehicles. We have the shock rifle. We have the disruptor rush does a great job against disabling vehicles. I think the plasma pistol needs to do a better job at tracking enemies on a charged shot. Right now, it feels like it's like the noob combo that we've had traditionally is kind of just like not there at all. I rarely see people use a plasma pistol because the tracking ability is so weak. I know 343 already mentioned this, so I guess they're probably looking to buff it in some capacity, but I think just a charged tracking shot is what needs a buff for the plasma pistol. Once you get that going, oh my God, I can't wait to start using noob combos. Next one, I'm kind of iffy on because I haven't had a whole lot of time with it, but I think that kind of tells into how effective the weapon is, and that is the pulse carbine. I like to see the tracking to be a little bit better. For it being a plasma weapon, the idea is to rip off the shields and then switch to a kinetic weapon to get that headshot. It feels like a lot of times with the pulse carbine, I'm like doing two, three, four bursts to try to bust the shields up and to switch to like a kinetic weapon. But at that point, it's just like the time to kill is so much longer than like anything else like compared to like an assault rifle or a sidekick. I think it's kind of like the base time to kill you need to compete with that uh, it doesn't really feel like the Coles Carbine is that effective. So I'd like to see the tracking to be a little bit better, especially against like when you have people strafing on you. It's pretty tough with land shots, actually. Next, we're talking about the Smash Machine, and I'm talking about the Gravity Hammer, and I'd like to see that get buffed, but not in the way a lot of swing time people want to see it buffed. I think the swing time, the blast radius, and everything about it is actually really cool. I like the changes to the Gravity Hammer, makes it really feel like you swing in like this big, heavy hammer. I love that aspect of it. But one thing I'd like to see buffed with it is the auto smash when it comes to the harpoon. If you guys don't know what I mean, it's like basically when you grapple shot somebody directly, it's called a harpoon. And then a lot of times like with the sword, you'll do a slash and get an instant kill. Or like if you're harpooning with a melee, you'll do a melee right away. Pretty obvious. But with the gravity hammer, you just do like a smash animation, but it's only like a melee. I don't know why the sword gets love to have a one shot melee with a harpoon, but the gravity hammer doesn't. Like, come on, 343, I, want to, I don't want to bonk and just like, you know, go for a second melee. I want to smash. Let me smash. Next is the Bulldog Shotgun, and kind of like as the meme says, it's great, but it could be better. I would like to see a slight increase in the range of the two-shot kill for the Bulldog. And I don't know if that means like add more pellets, tighten up the spread, make the pellets do more damage or something like that. Effectively, what I would like to see is just like that two-shot range to be dragged out a little bit more. Because the whole idea of a shotgun is to have that close range, but like, like you know, bump and shoulders close range, but like close range to kind of like quick kill. And right now with the Bulldog, it seems like it's a little bit faster than like an assault rifle, but not to the point where I feel like it's like a secondary power weapon where it's kind of sitting right now within the sandbox. I feel like it needs to earn that second tier of power weapons. And right now it's not quite doing it. So I'd like to see there's like a little bit of a buff when it comes to the two shot kill range. Lastly, on the buffs guys, I want to see the overshield get a buff. As I feel that like something like, like a power up, like an overshield, like an active camo, are supposed to be kind of like a game changer kind of thing that like something you really want to prioritize. Right now with the overshield, it feels like it's really good against like one gunfight that will help you give you that advantage. But after you're done with a gunfight, 
is your shields are basically ripped off to where you're back to normal again. It doesn't really feel like it can change the flow of a gameplay unless you're like this super high tier gameplay. So I'd like to see you be able to take more damage with the overshield. Maybe enough damage to survive through like two different gunfights to really kind of help change the flow of the gameplay to really make that equipment impactful to the gameplay. Now, I don't know if it's like a 50% increase, 100% increase or something like that, but you know, something to make it like a little bit more, like I said, impactful to the gameplay. I think it's really needed. This last section, I can't really tell if it needs to be nerfed or it needs to be buffed or something, you know, just needs to be changed about them because they don't feel that great compared to all the other things within the sandbox where I feel like you kind of pass them up when you see them on the wall. First, let's talk about the Stalker Rifle. I do love the idea of the Stalker Rifle. I think it's a really great, like, DM, true DMR type of, type of weapon. I just feel like it's kind of hard to land shots, especially headshots for that three-shot kill. I'm not sure if you just need to, like, increase the red reticle or bullet magnetism or something like that. Something just, it just, it feels a little too difficult. Another thing I'd like to see changed is the Hydra. Uh, I just feel like it's a little too low on the damage for, like, a second-tier power weapon that sits in right now. Maybe, like, increase the blast radius of, like, the free fire shots. Because I feel like oftentimes, like, my time to kill with a hydra is kind of about the same as like an assault rifle which i feel like a hydra should kill faster just because of like yeah it's a pickup weapon that's like a second tier power up you definitely want to pick it up and it feels like a lot of times i just kind of want to pass on it just because of the slow fire rate the slow projectile and like the blast radius isn't really that great so i like to see a little bit of a buff to it but you know i kind of leave it 343 three three to see if the weapon's performing as they expect it because in the right hands, it can do very well. Like it's like sometimes it feels like the Hydra is great and other times the Hydra is kind of eh. Next weapon on this list would be the Commando. I feel like needs a closer look uh, that, because like it's bad. Like it's certainly a good weapon. Uh, I do like how it's kind of like in this mid tier, like long range weapon, short range weapon because it's a fully auto. Uh, but I feel like it's just like, if you have to compare that to like a battle rifle when it comes to competing in distances, I would rather take the battle rifle any day compared to a commando. I only pick it up whenever like I need to, or if there's nothing else to pick up in a big tin battle lobby. So I'm not sure if they need to return it back to like the flight damage of like, you know, having one less bullet to get the kill, maybe decrease the spread on it, maybe decrease the recoil. I'm not totally sure. Just something needs to be looked at for it. Next is the disruptor. Like I mentioned earlier, it does great at disabling vehicles. If you guys haven't tried the, the disruptor, definitely go check it out. Like I think you can probably play around with it a lot, like on behemoth and I think some BTB maps you know it's not a super common weapon so against players it doesn't really do a great job against shielding and it doesn't really do a great job against health you do have this ability that if you like supercharge somebody you can kill them over time to reassess your next target uh but like since that time to kill since they're still alive they can still put damage on you and oftentimes when you're in like a one-on-one -on -one engagement or, or any type of engagement in halo you take some damage to where like you could still die like soon afterwards and it does have like the chain effect like all electric weapons do in halo infinite but i feel like it's not like that much of a game changing kind of thing where like it can maybe slightly damage someone who's like bumping shoulders with someone next to them maybe buff that chain effect a little bit more so where it can have a longer reach Maybe have it more effective against shields. Maybe have it that supercharge effect like really play a factor when it comes to disrupting the health. There are multiple ways. I just feel like right now, like it's really only good against like vehicles, against players, not so much. I feel like the Sentinel beam needs a little bit of a look at as well. I'm not sure if you need to decrease the recoil, increase the damage, bullet magnetism or something like that. But I feel like it's not that impactful when you pick it up. It can certainly do well uh, with it, but it just, I'm not quite sure if it needs a buff or a nerf or something about it. It just doesn't really fit the sandbox to where it can compete with other things within it. And those would be the changes to Halo Infinite Sandbox. Guys, if you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. If you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.